The worse the hangover, the better the party. The more heartbreaking you're broken you are, the more you're going to lose and the more intense the relation was. We were privileged that you chose Audi as a partner. From now on, the ways will split. It was a great, great partnership, friendship, extraordinary successes all together. Uh, thanks a lot to you, Eve, and every single one who wears the letters WRT on their chest. 13 years of collaboration create a bond, especially when important moments were shared. Intense emotions, disappointments, difficult times, and others more joyous, but above all, victories, titles, and lots of success. It's impossible to list everything here, but with WRT, Audi Sport scored its first victory in Japan, its first win at the Nürburgring 24 hours with the R8 LMS, and its first two victories at the 24 hours of Spa. So yes, on the evening of October the 2nd, only moments after WRT's last race with Audi in Barcelona, the emotion was palpable. And I will not say thank you enough. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was a real, real pleasure. Uh, again, really, thank you. Superstar, c'est une légende euh, qui apporte un, un engouement euh, de dingue. Valentino, c'est neuf titres de champion du monde, c'est des dizaines de millions de followers euh, sur les différents réseaux sociaux, euh, les, les dizaines de milliers de personnes qui sont habillées aux couleurs euh, VR46 euh, avec son numéro emblématique. I like more these. This is more our yellow, Me but too. it's not fluo. Because we have one yellow that is worth 46 yellow, the real one. Valentino Rossi and WRT. That's the stunt Vincent Voss pulled off during the winter break. For his reconversion on four wheels, the doctor chose the Belgian team. And at the beginning of February, Valentino visited Belgium. At the Boudoir workshop, he met the team and his teammates for the season. For me, it was uh, all new, you know, and uh, I, I was in, in, in different factories, but uh, always for, for motorcycle. First impression is a uh, very high level. Surprised me that they have uh, a place to try the pit stop with a real car for, for learn and uh, for go faster. Ça faisait partie de mes rêves, et uh, je trouve que pour un team belge, c'est vraiment super d'avoir une, une telle légende. The team is a reference in GT racing, but also in sports prototypes, with the 2022 LMP2 world title and a victory at the Le Mans 24 hours. WRT has grown enormously and is now structured into several distinct operational teams for GT cars, sports prototypes, the construction of racing cars and the manufacturing of chassis and roll bars. As we terugkijken in, in 2016 waren we met een 25 uh, taal, vandaag nog 107. <laughs> Hoe lastig is dat? Eigenlijk valt dat wel mee. We, uh, ik denk dat onze reputatie, uh, zowel wat betreft uh, de, het aangenaam werken bij ons, ik denk dat de mensen heel graag werken bij ons, als onze, onze, ja, onze palmares ons wel helpt om hele goede mensen aan te trekken. Dus voor ons valt dat wel mee. The GT department is led by Kurt Mollekens and Elliot Hoffet. This season, five cars are entered in the races of the GT World Challenge Europe. Two for professional drivers, the 32 of Dries Van Tour and Charles Vitz. Joined by Kelvin van der Linde for the endurance races and the 46, obviously, driven by Valentino Rossi. With the support of Fred Vervich and joined by Nico Muller in the endurance races. The other three cars are entered in the gold and silver categories, which means that the crews include non-professional drivers. There is the 30th Benjamin Geert and Thomas Neubauer, with Jean-Baptiste Simonauer joining them in endurance. The 31 for Hutchinson, Menchaka and Proctor. And the 33 for the Robin Brothers and Japanese driver Tomita in endurance. In sprint, the same car is shared by Simonauer and Chris Mees. In the World Endurance Championship, Jonas van Bachtenbeek managed the team. Two cars are entered in the LMP2 category. The number 41 under the real team WRT banner, with Ferdinand Habsburg, Norman Nato, and Rui Andrade at the wheel. And the number 31 for René Rast, Robin Freins, and Sean Galeil. For this second season in WEC, the pressure is on. In 2021, WRT won everything, Le Mans and both world and European titles, so they are among the favourites for this year. They have a strong start to the season with a double podium finish. 
second and third at the opening race in Sebring. But behind the scenes, Sebring is also a huge turning point in the history of WRT. It is in the United States that Vincent Voss learns that Audi, which is entering F1, will not go to the hypercar class at Le Mans. The team's future plans are completely called into question, and from the next race at Spa, there are several meetings with other potential partners. It's been a while since WRT won at Francorchamps, but at the beginning of May, they drive a perfect race with both their cars. From the start, Sean Galayle remains at the forefront of the category, at the wheel of the number 31. What follows is almost perfection. René Rast, Robin Fryens, the mechanics during the pit stops, and the engineers of the strategy, everything works like clockwork. And when the rain hits the track, Robin Fryens even takes the overall lead ahead of the Alpine and the Toyota hypercars. At the end of the race on a now dry track, things return to normal. Although he's the solid leader in LMP2, René cannot logically hold off against the hypercars. But Goliath, Rast and Fryens produce a real shocker at the Spa circuit, finishing on the overall podium, adding to their victory in the LMP2 category. The sister car, the number 41 of Habsburg, Nato and Andrade, finishes in second. Everything is working fine. The crews, composed during the off-season, work well together and within the WRT team. The atmosphere is exceptional. On sait que l'ambiance, je ne vais pas dire que c'est la base de tout. Il y a certainement moyen de gagner des courses avec une ambiance de merde. Mais euh, c'est beaucoup plus facile de gagner des courses avec euh, une top ambiance. Je pense que chez WRT, on, on a ça depuis le début. On a, on a une ambiance, euh, euh, je vais qualifier ça d'exceptionnelle. Et puis, il euh, y a une motivation euh, dans l'équipe euh, que je n'ai pas énormément vue euh, ailleurs. Et euh, c'est vraiment euh, super sympa de travailler dans ces conditions-là. After a superb start to the season and as defending champions, the WRT team is heading to Le Mans with three LMP2 cars this year. Next to the red and the blue one, there is also a green one for super subs in Naishen, Bortolotti and Dries Vantor. Already in Hyperpole, they show what they are capable of when Robin Fryens puts the number 31 on pole. Yes! Oh, oh, that was easy. Well, what a, a result for Robin Fryens, the WRT car 31. Last year's race winners here, they are on pole position from their teammates. Real team by WRT, Norman Nato, got close but not quite close enough. Hey, crack it. Crack the door. The LMP2 class with 27 cars, it's going to be for sure absolutely fantastic. Mesdames et Messieurs, WRT, c'est Robin Freins, Lipper Pullman, catégorie LMP2. On the starting grid, everything is in place to achieve a good performance, but Le Mans remains Le Mans. Yeah, like 10% nervous about not, not uh, making any damage in turn one. Yeah. 30% nervous about the difference between attack and defense. Yeah. And the rest is okay. Best of luck, all of you. Here we go. Le Mans 2022 is on. The WRT race quickly turns into a nightmare from the very first meters of the race. Give it time, oh, there's already off. someone's off. There's a car off before turn one. We're car 22, we're United. Knowing. What happened is the race director asked that the hypercar and the LMP2, they keep a gap arriving on the grid. And the car 22, which was supposed to be behind, just jumped before the finish line, the start line, and was in front. And we, we touch car 22, and car 22 hit car 41. And unfortunately, the stewards decide to give us a one-minute stop-and-go penalty. Okay, Rene, we have to box. We have to box this lap. We have a one-minute stop-and-go for a collision on the start. 
With card 22, it's still a decision, you have to do it. Box, box. They look at what happened in the turn, but they didn't look at what happened on the grid for the start. The 22 was ahead of me before the start. Unfortunately, already we could not fight it. It is a steward's decision, even though we think it's not correct. Anyway, our job is to focus now and do everything to get back in front. Starting the Le Mans 24 hours with a penalty is not ideal. All LMP2 cars have very similar performances. So in each stint, every driver has to give his all, which they all do perfectly. But you also need a perfect strategy and a bit of luck with the full course yellows and the safety cars. But this year, things do not go smoothly. All three cars are struggling to get back to the front, despite the exceptional work of the drivers, tacticians and mechanics. During the night, there are some minor mechanical problems or small driver issues, but nothing serious. Sunday morning, Galil, Rast and Freins can still aim for a LMP2 podium finish until the unimaginable happens. Robin Freins makes a mistake, the only one of the season. I crashed. What happened? Are you okay? Yeah, it's over. Sorry. Are you okay, buddy? Robin, are you okay? I think so. Yeah, I'm jumping out now. Just very disappointed. Generally very disappointed how the race went. Um, because basically from the start we we were well, having issues like penalties and uh, always losing time and focus yellows and another penalty. And even though the car was working really well, I think we were one of the quickest. So we are always trying to get back. But yeah, you do one step forward, but then we lose two steps again. So it's, it's just been very frustrating. In the championship, there are double points to be won in Le Mans. So this retirement is frustrating and has serious consequences. For the number 41 real team car, things do not go much better. Their 17th place in LMP2 does not score them a single point. In the end, it is the green car which gets the best results. Inaishan, Bortolotti and Vantor finish in 11th in LMP2. Not bad for their first shot at Le Mans. Back to early April for the GT season opener in Imola. If there is one crew that works well together, it is that of Dries Van Tor and Charles Wirtz. In endurance, they form a shock trio with Kelvin van der Linde. The 32 starts the season in the best possible way with a pole position signed by Charles Wirtz. However, on the grid, things seem a bit tense. A premonition, maybe? Ou on part en tête et c'est bien, ou, ou, on, ou on est cinquième et c'est bien aussi, et on, pas le moindre risque, pas le moindre truc, mais tout va aller nickel. Oh putain! And that was the leader getting it wrong. Charles Wirtz coming out of the Villeneuve chicane, rattled it across the gravel, and he has gift wrapped the lead and given it to Christopher Meese. It will come. Front will come. Tell him. A small error, probably due to the pressure at the start of the season. On sait que, que l'erreur est humaine. Um, je pense que à ce moment-là, la meilleure chose à faire, c'est de se reconcentrer dans la course directement et pas de réfléchir sur l'erreur. Se re reconcentrer sur le prochain virage et puis faire de son mieux pour essayer de, de recoller la voiture devant. C'est ce qu'on a fait. Uh, puis après, voilà, il me semble que j'avais fait uh, aussi un bon, un bon tour in et ça a permis à, à Kelvin également de reprendre, uh, de reprendre uh, la première place par après. There's also some early season pressure for Valentino's very first race in the GT World Challenge. The pit, yes, the pit. Uh, I miss the pit. <laughs> I miss the pit uh, because of a lot, a lot of confusion. And uh, I, I, when I, I arrive and I miss the pit, when I understand that I miss the pit, they say, ah, no. <laughs> stupid mistake. 
a lot of confusion. I see one, one second sad, but I don't see you at all. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Imola is the perfect start to the WRT season with an overall win for Kelvin, Dries and Charles. Super happy, first win in endurance, so definitely with all of words, amazing job by everybody in the team. And uh, yeah, let's celebrate this first win and uh, let's try to keep it up like that. And in the silver category, Benjamin Geert, Jean-Baptiste Semenau and Thomas Neubauer get on the top step as well. We nearly had a perfect race, so super happy with this and hopefully it continues like this. The GT season is off to a good start. For the two pro crews, the remainder of the GT World Challenge Europe season feels much like that first race. The 46 is in constant progress, and the 32 always fights at the front. If it doesn't finish on the podium, it is because it doesn't finish. At Paul Ricard, for instance, when Dries Van Tor has to retire following this contact. <laughs> The GT racing calendar is 10 race weekends long, all over Europe, and not counting the tests. So sometimes it is necessary to take some time off to relieve the pressure. Oh yeah, we have back wind. Good, good point, Charles. So we do blood in the start? No, 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 we do. Best of three. One of the secrets of the team's top duo is this bond. But the spirit of competition is never far away. Yes! Yeah, fuck, fuck you, you were like this, eh? No, 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 c'est devenu plus que le coéquipier, c'est devenu réellement euh, un ami très proche. On pourrait quasiment dire que c'est de ma famille, c'est quasiment comme un, comme un frère euh, sur lequel j'essaye évidemment de me calquer, euh, de prendre un exemple dans certaines choses et dans d'autres, j'essaye de le prendre un petit peu moins. Misano, the Viet's Vantor duo, will once again show that they are among the best, if not the best, GT drivers in the world. They are untouchable throughout the weekend, with two pole positions and two victories in as many races. All'interno del circuito di Misano, Dries Van Tor è il vincitore di gara 1. It's a perfect weekend, the ideal way to gain even more confidence. <laughs> The 46 car makes progress in every race, finishing in the top 10 at times. On home soil, Valentino Rossi enters the top five, together with his mate, Fred Vervish. Great job. Great job. You just keep Guno behind you. That's not too bad, eh? You try at the first The silver drivers again won their category and even claimed a genuine stunt result. In Italy, Thomas and Benjamin get onto the overall podium. So all is well when the team travels to Spa for the official 24 hours test days. We find geen een halve seconde niet meer op die testdagen. Dat is niet dat je nog gaat veel tijd van die wagen afvijzen, maar je gaat die piloten beter maken omdat die daar weer eens hebben gereden, weer eens de 50 toeren hebben gedaan en die weten waar ze gaan terechtkomen twee maar twee drie vier maanden later. Valentino Rossi had never set foot in Spa. For him, the whole week of the 24 hours was a real discovery. Great. I enjoy a lot. I have a lot of people. The parade is a, is a great idea and it was very funny. It's a long weekend, uh, but especially the track. The track is fantastic and uh, it's a great place for make a 24 hour. 
I always uh, uh, race a spa with a, with a computer, with a, with a PlayStation, you know. And it's the first time for the for the 24 hours, so I don't know what uh, what we have to expect, but I think that uh, will be very interesting. You have good eyes for the night. I have good eyes for the night. <laughs> The 24 Hours of Spa takes place at the end of July. It is quite symbolic that BMW Motorsport sign an agreement with the Belgian team on WRT's home soil. They will work together for the brand's official return to Le Mans and in the WEC in 2024, aiming for the overall win with a hypercar, but also for the brand's entire GT3 program from next year onwards. Between Sebring in March and Spa at the end of July, it took Vincent Voss, Eve and Pascal Vietz only five months to find a partnership agreement with one of the biggest brands in motorsport, BMW. But before that, the job with Audi has to be finished. They have set their minds on a win in the Spa 24 hours, a victory which eludes WRC since 2014. I think our race car is better than our qualifying car. I'm still confident we can do a good job in the race. The big mistake caused the race, but also the small mistakes, one after the other, cost the race. To be slower doesn't cost you the race, not at that point. You will see that within the first three hours, we will lose three, four, five cars that were potential winners. It always happens. We don't want to be one of those cars. That's the main thing. The 24 hours of Spa is the toughest GT race in the world. A real sprint from start to finish. But the lack of top speed of the R8 and bad luck in certain strategic choices undermine WRT's race from the start. The two pro cars are in the top 10 all through the night, but it is clear that a podium finish will be very tough to get. Sunday morning, a silly accident ruins the race of the two pro cars. Charles Fiatz is surprised by an incomprehensible braking maneuver from an amateur driver in front of him, and he is hit by Nico Muller at the wheel of the 46, an absolute nightmare. There were factors external that made that during the weekend we didn't have to be really in the line of competitiveness in which we were expecting to be, especially after the tests that were very qui était très bon, on a, on a fait le meilleur temps des tests, bon, voilà, pour ce que ça veut dire, évidemment. Et puis voilà, le week-end ne s'est juste pas passé comme, comme on pouvait, comme, comme on le souhaitait plutôt. Euh, il y a eu des, des erreurs euh, de la part d'une peu de la stratégie, aussi des erreurs de pilotage, et puis euh, au final, voilà, il y a ces, cet accident euh, malheureux, en plus qui a appelé les deux voitures, euh, les deux voitures sœurs, donc c'était vraiment, euh, je pense, la, la cerise sur le gâteau sur ce week-end-là. We hebben gemerkt eigenlijk dat onze partners, onze sponsors, onze stakeholders, um, ook de mensen, de mensen van de groep, ons, uh, ons management, uh, dat het eigenlijk een hele leuke uh, plaats is om, ja, om business te doen, maar ook om een spannende manier met elkaar te praten. Uh, wat we dit jaar hebben mogen uh, meemaken was eigenlijk fantastisch. De partners die beginnen samenwerken, uh, zowel qua marketing bijvoorbeeld, um, als qua uh, de, de filming, uh, dus ja, eigenlijk zoals het hoort, een networking uh, event. Zonder dat het eigenlijk aan de basis de bedoeling is om het op te zetten als een networking event, loopt dat eigenlijk heel mooi voor ons, ja. The pro drivers will want to forget the Spa 24 hours as quickly as possible, but the other three cars of the team had a pretty successful race. The number 31 of Hutchinson, Proctor and Menchaca was consistent from start to finish, and despite a small collision, the crew crossed the finish line in a solid 24th position. In the 
gold category, Ruchero Tomita, together with Uli's de Pau, Arnold and Max Robin did not deviate one inch from their original plan. For 24 hours, they set their mind on the podium in the gold category. In the end, a splendid second place was their reward. Very emotional because after my little mistakes at the start of the race, um, we did um, the perfect race, you know, a good pace, no mistakes. So yeah, very emotional. But the award of the best performance of these 24 hours has to go to the trio of drivers and the technical team of the number 30 car. Since the start of the season, Benjamin Gur, Jean-Baptiste Simonin and Thomas Neubauer worked perfectly together and they continued to gain momentum to deliver a solid race at Spa. No error, no haste, no doubt within the crew. Who drove the perfect race? Faced with extremely keen competition, the three young drivers dominated the Silver Cup category, claiming a magnificent class win and a 13th place overall. Tout n'était pas notre côté. Il a fallu vraiment aller chercher la performance et donner le maximum pour avoir le résultat. C'était une course qui était qui était dure, je pense, sur la sur la durée, parce que. On a dû se battre tout au long de la course pour, pour finir où on a fini. Donc je ne m'attendais certainement pas à quelque chose d'aussi dur. Mais en même temps, je suis content qu'il ait fallu se battre de cette façon parce que ça rend, ça rend tout de suite un peu, plus, euh, comment dire, un peu plus de mérite à la victoire. Monza is the temple of speed. To go fast here, you probably have to get around the track very slowly, on foot. Here, every tenth is won through small details. Whether it's the ideal trajectory or the best braking spot, this track walk is very important. Like in the race, I don't go, in quali maybe, but like don't, don't put your tire here. Like it's either here or here. Because like it does, uh, like it's like, but Monza will also serve as a redemption for the team after the disappointment of Le Mans. At the end of the day, uh, this makes us stronger. Uh, we were really eager to, to come back and show the world that was a, that was a mistake, that was uh, a small stone uh, along the way. Just to make sure you guys stay cool because it's going to be hot. Um, and also stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, eat some food, some sugar. At Monza, it was the turn of the real team WRT car to collect the laurels. Okay, we super job. Pace is good. Once again, and thanks to this victory, WRT puts a young driver into orbit, together with Norman Nato and Ferdinand Habsburg. 23-year-old Rui Andrade takes his first World Championship victory. The team continues its harvest of wins. We are now on the other side of the world. Konnichiwa, Team WRT de GT World Challenge Europe no driver o shiteru Tomita Ryuichiro desu. Kyo wa Team WRT no ouen ni WEC Japan ni yatte kimashita. Minna de Team WRT o ouen shite kudasai. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. As a local, Ryuichiro, Tomita came to visit his team during the six hours of Fuji in Japan. With René Rast being retained in the DTM, the German driver is replaced by Dries Van Tor at the wheel of the LMP2 car he first drove in Le Mans. Dries has an impressive ability to adapt quickly, and WRT puts its two cars in third and fourth place on the starting grid. the start, the team is again among the front runners. Mega job, keep driving like you do, same pace as Lin and quicker than Kubica. All LMP2 cars are identical and between the different top teams the performances are very closely matched. A race is therefore decided by driving skills and strategy, a WRT speciality. Box this lap, box this lap, confirm, driver change. Clear laps, watch the white line on the exit. 
they prove it once again in Japan when the number 31 claims a new win after the victory pocketed at Spa and the disappointment of Le Mans, a race that can be summed up in one word, or in three or four. Redemption. Splendid. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, no, wait. No, I no. want to say something else. No. Oh. Okay, you can. At the end. <laughs> At the That's end. two words. <laughs> At the end. <laughs> At the end. When WRT arrives in Bahrain, for the final race of the WEC season, they have one last chance to clinch the world title. To achieve that goal, they have to win and hope that Jota does not finish in the top six, so it's out of their hands. There is still a small chance to win a championship for sure. Um, do I believe in it? Honestly, not really, um, because if you see generally the perspective of the LP2 cars, they always, they are quite strong cars. Not a lot of people have the technical problems. Uh, fortunately, we had two of them this year. Um, but normally, always the LMP2 cars finishing the race. So the best what we can do is win the race and uh, let's see, we'll see what happens with the other cars. And Robin is right. But the team has a perfect weekend, starting with the pole position in LMP2, courtesy of Norman Nato in the number 41 real team car. So we are third row on the left-hand side. So next to the Alpine. During the race, WRT will once again prove that it is the team to beat. Starting seventh on the grid, Galil, Freins and Rast manage to drive a perfect race. Solid job, solid job. We have around a minute uh, in front of the United. Congrats, buddy. Mega weekend. They cross the finish line as winners, their third win of a six-race season. Enjoy it. So, in pit exit, you will reverse and you will pick up René, Sean and myself, mate. But it is not enough to win the title. <laughs> The balance sheet of WRT in WEC this season, even though less spectacular than last year's, is still exceptional. On a gagné plus de 50% des courses en gagnant 4 courses sur 6. Cette saison a été euh, aussi exceptionnelle que la saison dernière. C'est juste le titre qui manque. Return to Europe for the final races of the GT team. At the Hockenheim race, Benjamin Gert, Thomas Neubauer and Jean-Baptiste Simonau are again successful. All good. All the, best. the fourth round of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup at Hockenheim for the first time is go. Lights go green. Thanks to another podium finish, they become endurance champions in the silver category. Dans un sens, je me suis pas forcément rendu compte des titres qui se jouaient où euh, j'essayais de faire course après course. Donc arrivé à arriver au Kenheim, sur la ligne d'arrivée, on dit bon bah on est champion. Sur le coup, je me disais, t'es sûr C'est vraiment le cas Parce que jusqu'à là, j'avais pas du tout regardé le classement, le classement championnat et je voulais juste regarder la, la victoire de la course. But if there's one race that marks the GT World Challenge season, it's the Valencia race. This weekend, we're at sunny Valencia for the final races in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. The lights will change from red to green. The race gets underway. Now they blast away. This time, Dries Van Tor and Charles Veerts are unable to show their usual domination. The Audi is a bit behind the Ferraris and Mercedes. So the two friends of the 32 have to give it their all. It is going to be a third Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Sprint Cup title for Dries Van Thor and Charles Weert. In the first heat, they finish on the podium, enough to score a third consecutive driver's title in the Sprint Cup. We need the points. The lights will change to green. We go racing and a really keen start. The championship is done, yeah, but we won the team championship. 
With the driver's title in hand, Dries and Charles now go all in, looking for the win in the second race of the weekend. But when Charles takes over the car from Dries, the track is still wet. The team takes a gamble and puts on slick tyres, an audacious bet. Are you sure it's slick? Uh, I'm not sure, but anyway, if we finish third, we don't, we don't get anything. On a very treacherous track, Charles initially loses time and falls down to 15th. But on the drying track, he makes an exceptional comeback. At the start of the last lap, he is in third. Timor Boguslavski and Charles Weirs, who has come back from nowhere. But Weirs goes round the outside and he leads. They're still side by side. Boguslavski fights back, but Charles Weirs has done it. Charles Weirs goes through. What a race. A crazy race that will forever remain one of the boss's best memories of the year. Ça fait partie de cette magie du sport automobile. Et ça fait partie de ces émotions comme ça qui qu'on ne peut pas avoir souvent dans d'autres circonstances. As we say, we always learn, and this uh, this race I learned that I can always count on my team uh, to provide us uh, the best strategy and the best the best car. So. September the 12th in Boutour, a historic occasion. The first two BMW M4s, the cars that will replace the Audi R8 during the 2023 GT season, have arrived at the workshop. As you know, I think that as we look at our parcours in the last year, we are very ambitious. And the working with BMW is again a new step for our people in their career. So you can with us instappen en, en doorgroeien, een paar jaar best te worden, goede expertise opdoen en verder doorgroeien. En kijk, nu kunnen we weer iets aanbieden aan onze mensen. Uh, dus mensen intern gaan weer doorgroeien, externe mensen die we gaan aantrekken met expertise, met ervaring, waardoor de mensen vandaag weer beter gaan worden. Dus ik denk wel dat dat een grote toegevoegde waarde is, absoluut, ja. Les gars, on écoute deux secondes. On se, re, on se laisse encore un quart d'heure pour visionner un peu tout ce que chacun veut voir sur la voiture et après on se fait un meeting pour orienter euh, un minimum le boulot pour essayer d'être efficace. Euh. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, on va plus essayer de démonter cette voiture-là que celle-là. Euh, Gilou a demandé euh, sur le groupe ce week-end d'avoir une voiture complètement montée en carrosserie, euh, je pense jeudi ou vendredi, pour qu'il prenne toutes ses cotes au niveau des stickers. WRT's last dance with Audi in Barcelona is an emotional one. A final victory and a final Silver Cup title are the parting gifts. The Belgian team and the people from Ingolstadt have lived together. So many strong moments that at the moment of parting ways, the emotion was clearly palpable. How could it be otherwise? With 55 of the 62 Audi victories in the SRO championships claimed by WRT, 41 titles, wins at Bathurst, Sepang, Suzuka, at the 24 hours of Spa, Nürburgring, Zolder and Dubai, 13 seasons of prolific collaboration. But the competition does not wait, and quickly, the Audi book has to be closed. It's time to start the BMW chapter on a blank page. Natuurlijk, met dat het WRT nu ook naar BMW gaat, is het natuurlijk een, een, een super combinatie om, om zeg maar, het team niet te verliezen. En uh, op dit moment uh, denk ik dat het WRT een GT en ook een, een, zeg maar, een beetje alles wat we proberen, uh, toch zeker bij de wereld best te horen in, in, in de racerijwereld. Uiteindelijk zijn er nog altijd GT3 auto's, dus is dat niet fundamenteel verschillend. Ik denk dat een challenge voor onze uh, race engineers veel groter is dan voor ons als management. I think is a, is a great plan. Uh, it's better for me because uh, I become a, a, a factory driver for BMW and I'm very happy. C'est un énorme challenge uh, qu'on ne prend pas à la légère. C'est aussi pour ça qu'on n'a plus fait de course après uh, Barcelone. C'est que je pense qu'il fallait faire vraiment un, un vrai cut et, uh, pour mieux se préparer pour le début de saison 2023, qui va être un énorme challenge. <rires> 